and 90% of the effective advertising is going to die out after three periods. Three months, three weeks, whatever it is, three hours, whatever your uh, interval time, time interval is. If you wanted to know the 50% duration interval, delete. So the 90% duration interval was <coughs> roughly three periods. Is the 50% duration interval going to be more or less than that? More, more or less than three. What's that? Be more. Be more? There's a 50 shot. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> So what the duration interval tells us is that 90% of the effective advertising is going to die out after three periods. So, but half of the period, so if we look at the graph, right, half of the effective advertising will die out less than that. Roughly, what do we have? About one period. But remember, it's not linear. It's a geometric decay. Which I think kind of makes sense. Um, Especially when it, when it when it becomes when it comes to things like remembering stuff, you don't forget stuff in a linear fashion. You start to forget, and that rate of forgetfulness starts to, to decline pretty rapidly. So I think that's what we're we're talking about with advertising. How long is it going to last? Uh, we don't think it's going to it's going to behave linearly. So we can use this model to to help the firm understand how effective their advertising is, uh, and when they should use it, when they should start advertising again. Let's not worry about that. Okay, so let's go to the problems that you guys just finished right now. So that's the data set you guys just finished using. You went through a whole bunch of information criteria, which I don't think was very helpful. What does T set T mean? Uh, T set time. Uh, T set T is, the, is our time coefficient. So T set, did we not cover T set? No, we did, but okay. uh, I've never seen T. But was it in the last spot? Was that, was I think it, it was already T set. Like I had the T and it was numbered. <laughs> Oh, yeah, T is just our, our time variable. So we already generated lag. So let's run our unrestricted model. So this is kind of a rep repeat of what we already did. Yeah, T setting opens up the use of the lag operators, which is nice. Oh, I didn't. It's a new data set. And we got that picture. We said, okay, this looks like a good candidate for <clears throat> a polynomial lab. It looks like a polynomial. It looks like a good candidate for a polynomial lab. So we did that, and we got a you know a decent looking polynomial lab. We attributed this this kind of uptick here to perhaps multicollinearity. The, the fact that um, running all these lags is kind of muddling up or is muddling up our model. So we did the polynomial lag, generated that Z stuff. We had a nice structure to our do file, hopefully. And we did, we got that, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, I like it. Things like that. Compare it to itself, to the, the unstructured. Definitely better looking. But what we're saying now is, could we apply the lingering effects model to this unstructured look? So we're saying things, things grow gradually and they die gradually. The lingering effect allows us to have kind of sharper 
uh, a sharper increase and then a sharper decline that decays. So what would it look like if we applied the lingering effects model to this and then shifted over that peak? So let's run the lingering effects model. And remember that the coefficient on lagged sales is our carryover effect, which is pretty high. And now it's 0.8. Let's see what this looks like. And again, notice we got a pretty nice, uh, pretty insane R squared. Let's grab these things. Pull the betas, and this is just the lingering effects model. But we added <coughs> lag advertising, and we've shifted over that peak one period. So, yeah, we shifted over the peak one period, but it looks like we could shift it over again, right? So what do we do? We add one more um, lagged advertising. So we add advertising, we add la uh, uh, one period lagged advertising, let's add a two period lagged advertising. And again, this is the nice thing about the flexibility of lingering effects. So, what do we have here? Remember the coefficient on lag sales is our carryover effect. So now we have two period lag advertising, which is going to shift over that peak two periods. And then we got the PowerPoint that tells us how to construct our coefficients. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple process. <laughs> it's so simple, it doesn't even fit on the So that's shifting over that peak two periods. Let's kind of superimpose it onto the data and see if it looks better. Maybe one more, three periods. So we add another lag advertising, which is a three period lag advertising. And here it is here. Again, uh, the coefficient on lag advertising is the carryover. And that's uh, 0.7 now, 71-ish. periods now, so let's go Yep, so it's this. So again, we have three, period, uh, three periods of lagged advertising. So the coefficients, our, our lag structure, is going to follow this pattern. So basically I'm constructing a do file here. Give me lambda, multiply it times beta 0, plus beta 1, which is our coefficient on one period lagged advertising, beta two is the two period lagged advertising, and beta three is the three period lagged advertising. So I've got that. I convert that to a do file. I get that, which you could almost do in your head.
that you know, we, we've changed some of the, the behavior of I mean, not just the picture but how we're assuming people respond to advertising we got this um, sharp increase a peak and then a geometric decay Again, we don't have to worry about coming up with lag structure. The only thing we're changing here is the peak. Where do we think the peak effect of advertising is? Is it the initial impact, or is it a couple days later? Does it take time for these advertisements to um, uh, to work their way into to, to, to consumers' consciousness? So, if we're talking about something like halftime, Super Bowl halftime commercial, right? Six million? 30 seconds? Is that right? Want to follow that? I think it was six million for a 30 second spot. So you're spending a ton of money. You got this one big effect. Um, what do you think is going to happen? Initial impact, or is that going to happen a couple days later? Then I guess the initial impact wouldn't be that day you're watching the game. You're hungover the next day. <laughs> Uh, so maybe a couple of days later, it takes a couple of days to get there. Uh, but it depends on the period, uh, periodicity of, of the data also. If you've got weekly data, then all that's going to happen in the first week, right? So that first week is going to be the first impact. Um, if you've got daily data, then maybe it does take two days for the Super Bowl uh, halftime commercial or halftime commercials or Super Bowl commercials to, uh, to have an impact. So it just depends on kind of the structure of the data. Can we capture? The initial impact, or is it going to be contained in? If we got monthly data, then essentially we're saying whatever happens in that in, in those first 30 days is all going to be considered one month. So that, that's an initial impact. Um, just kind of questions of what model to use, and again, starting with the. This is just the three. Uh, I left out the kind of the pure linear effects model, but here is the one period lagged advertising, um, two period lagged advertising, and then the three period lagged advertising, and then the unstructured unstructured is the loop. <clears throat> grasp of what, you, of what we're doing today in terms of, I guess the reason I get so excited about this stuff is what we're, what we're, what we're doing is looking into the minds of consumers. How are consumers thinking, acting, and behaving in response to the stimulus? Um, the stimulus are, is the advertising. So how do consumers absorb it? How do they respond to it? And does that response carry on over time? The whole point of time series is that we can track these, these, these lagged effects. Yeah, I saw this a couple days ago, and right? The problem is if we look at these unrestricted models, we just get wackiness. And it's just almost endemic in the, in, in the fact that once we start including lots of lagged variables, we're cluttering up our, 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 our desk. I mean, you've, got, you've ever seen my desk. 
When you've got a ton of stuff on your desk, it's hard to find anything. And that's really what we're doing. When we start adding all these lag variables, we're cluttering up our regression, and we end up with wacky things like this popping up, which makes absolutely no sense. This says that the effects of advertising died out, but then eight months later, boom, it comes to me and it hit me. And it makes absolutely no sense. That's probably the result of, of multi, what we're calling multicollinearity. Uh, we just got too much stuff going on in our regression model. It, 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 for regression models, tidy is better. The fewer the things, have the essential stuff, but the fewer the things are better. And all these lab variables, and I, I, I told you the first time we did this, these, this, this blue line, this model that we're criticizing, is how most people do lag effects. They just run these unrestricted models, they get wacky results, and then they try to convince themselves that there's a story in there. What we're saying is we can improve on that by imposing some structure onto those lag coefficients. That let's not just rely on something that we know is inherently subject to to noise because of all these lag coefficients in our regression. They're just subject to, to messiness. Um, the polynomial is one, is one method. That seemed to fit this pretty well. But even with this model, I'm sorry, even with this data, we can fit the um, lingering effects model to it by adjusting those peak effects to occur at uh, three periods as opposed to the first period. So yeah, we're going to start. <clears throat> we're going to start where everyone else finishes. You're done here. You're going to try to convince the marketing department that this is how people behave. Uh, we're going to start there, and it's going to give us a guide as to kind of a polynomial uh, lag or a lingering effects lag. So that's what we're trying to do. Trying to get an insight into how effective our advertising is, how consumers are responding, and how do we optimize it, right? If we know that 90% of, of, of an ad is going to die off in a couple of days, then we shouldn't wait a month to run up another ad. If we think, oh, it lasts a month, well, it might last a month with your unrestricted model, but uh, maybe we're saying that 90% is dying off after, like I said, a couple of days. So um, help the firm optimize its advertising uh, expenditures. We're going to do this whole serial correlation thing, but we can fix that. Cut the praise thing down. Um, we add in that, that SSE Hilbert Blue, Hilbert Blue command, and that's it. We don't have to go through the math of the transformation. Any questions? Hopefully, you got these pictures nice and clear. I don't know who owns that, but it's probably pretty valuable uh, in about 10 minutes when you leave. Can you post it on YouTube? You do really? Really? Yeah. Doesn't get many views. Believe it doesn't get many views. <laughs> Not many views, huh? <laughs> Anyone can find it? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> do I get royalties? <laughs> Ten views. Get yeah, more views. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many views do you need before you make? Probably a lot. Uh, probably a couple million. Probably a lot. Million. That's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you, work on it. you need like a million to get a <laughs> million people, people in the class. Probably. I don't know. Probably more. All right. You guys each go multiple times. <laughs> Just leave it on. Leave it on the loop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> write a program to keep accessing. All right. Any questions? Um, this is going to be the, the end of the time series component for this class. Uh, I think this is the most important stuff for time series. Uh, we're going to start some some really cool stuff happening. I'm not some more really cool stuff happening, <laughs> uh, which is going to be awesome. The fun stuff, and, and it's going to uh, get us into tableau. We need to get into tableau. <laughs> so, all right. Good luck. Thursday. What time? Nine to two. Nine to two.
Wow. Yeah. So this isn't the first interview. I uh, know. I had like a, a screening interview. Yeah. Right. Nine to two. Yeah. It's a long one. Well, we've got uh, a couple of people there. So I don't know if you've heard, but we no longer have a person. Sarah, really? Remember Sarah Dev? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, Susan the, Adams. You know, Susan Adams. Great. Great, a great resource. Mm -hmm. It's gone. It's gone. Why? Why? You have to ask the dean. Oh, great! Another another kind of thing we gotta.